Hey everyone, it's Dylan from I Don't Know Reviews coming at you today with a review for the newest installment in the Harry Potter universe, I guess, maybe? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess I'll just call it that. Um, this is Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. I'm just gonna preface this by saying I am not the biggest Harry Potter fan. I do enjoy the movies. I read the books as a kid. I didn't read all the books as a kid. I, I like the movies okay. I think they're fine, fun movies. I, I didn't want to say I was ec ecstatic to see this one. I wasn't like, I wasn't dreading it. I was in the middle. I was like, ah, it's gonna be fine, right? It'll probably be okay. And we are gonna talk about that because this was a very disappointing and not very good movie. <laughs> now for those of you who don't know, Fantastic Beasts takes place about seven years before the events of the Harry Potter saga. And it takes place in 1920s New York following Eddie Redmayne as Newt Scamander as he has a box full of creatures, a suitcase, and a guy... Some random dude, not a wizard, played by Dan Fogler, opens this case up and monsters fly out and it's up to them to get them. Of course, there is more to this. It is not just about this, but let's talk about this movie. Now, like always, I'm going to talk about the good stuff first and let's just start off with the effects were fine. They were, the effects worked and, you know, that leads into the beasts. The beasts were cool. You know, J.K. Rowling is very imaginative. She could really think of all these cool things and the, the beasts themselves, you know, they range from a tiny little little uh, mole guy that likes to steal things to this giant flying snake creature and you know they're very imaginative and cool looking and it's cool when they're on screen and it's fun to watch them on screen because they all have their little quirks and their little different things that make them different and unique and most of the scenes revolving around the beast are very fun and energetic and really cool and imaginative and just very different and off the wall because you know it's the Harry Potter universe so it's really crazy and magical and all that good stuff. The acting was fine. You know, you get some really good actors. You have freaking Colin Farrell. You got Eddie Redmayne, among many other people. This movie's packed to the brim with actors, and they do their best. They do their best with what they're given, and I can't really knock anyone and say that person didn't act well, except maybe Ezra Miller because he was a little off the wall and weird. But I will say the standout for me was Dan Fogler. He was by far my favorite character. He was very funny, very energetic. Um, he actually had a character arc, which was good, and that's going to lead into some of the things I did not like about this movie, but Dan Fogler's character actually had a character arc, and he changed, unlike some other characters. <laughs> and yeah, that's kind of where all the good stuff stops. Um, you know, it's it, it's enjoyable for what it is. Um, don't go into it thinking it's going to be something amazing. It's not the next Harry Potter movie. It is the weakest one I have seen from the whole series as of now. And all my problems with this movie come back to one thing. The screenplay. J.K. Rowling cannot write a screenplay. This movie does not work on multiple levels because of the screenplay and the, just the script and the things that's hap the things that are happening how everything's connected it doesn't add up half the time actually most of the time it doesn't add up it skip the pacing is bananas it's it boggles my mind how drastic this movie changes because you'll get these fun little scenes with Newt Scamander and his ragtag group trying to catch monsters and the next thing we're seeing child abuse and like corruption in the politics. It just doesn't fit with them trying to catch a freaking invisible monkey. It just doesn't. And while yes, you could say that the the parts I enjoyed more were the parts with Newt's commander trying to find the beasts with his with his group, but also the characters are not developed at all. Some of them, you don't understand anything about them. Newt Scamander being a prime example, because he's the main character, the titular character of this film. And what do we know about him? He's awkward. He really likes animals. And that's it. That's, 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 that's what you get. That's all you get. He doesn't go through any arc. He doesn't change at all. None of the characters do. And it really bothers me, because the comic relief character is the only one who actually was interesting to look to watch because you're like I care about this guy I care that he wants to open this bakery because he really believes in it his grandmother did it and he wants to do it and but like Newt Scamander he just loses his beast and he's like oh, I want him back because I really care about them and it's like okay but what else <laughs> and plus there's just multiple stories going on like I just said there's the part with Eddie Redmayne trying to get the beast there's stuff with Ezra Miller and like this weird household with they don't like magic people and then you have Colin Farrell in the in the in the magical government of the 
the USA and <laughs> they're trying to figure out this weird thing that's been happening around the city and they just, these stories don't mesh well. Throughout the whole movie, they just keep cutting between them with no interconnections whatsoever. Like occasionally it's like, oh, Newt Commander is going to interact with this guy, but in terms of the bigger picture, it doesn't add up until the very end of this movie. So for me anyway, I was left throughout this entire movie just wondering, what the hell is happening? Why do I care about any of this? And also, the stuff that was good and the stuff that was cool was squandered, was wasted. Ron Perlman plays a really cool mob boss goblin. He's in the movie for a minute, maybe. <laughs> like, and this cool underground bar that's like where all the bad people in New York hang out. That's cool, it's a cool idea, but they don't do anything with it. And you have stuff like Newt's case, and like, that was a cool scene, and it could've, they could've done more with it. And the beasts themselves, they, there could've been the most prominent feature because this movie is too busy trying to set up five fucking movies and there's like we need to set up this whole this whole saga of the Fantastic Beast movies and they're saying that Newt Scamander's not going to be them in all of them so what's the point of this movie this movie doesn't have a point it's just there and you know if you just take it at face value it's like oh it's a fun weird little movie and you know, if that's what you take away from it, then that's fine. You can like this movie. People have liked this movie. For me personally, I thought it was a bit of a letdown and a lot of wasted potential. And I don't think J.K. Rowling should ever write a script ever again because it wasn't good. Now, I went to see this with a couple people. I saw this with my girlfriend who loves Harry Potter. I saw this with a good friend of mine who also loves Harry Potter. And then another friend of mine who likes it okay. And he was, he liked it. Girlfriend d hated it. She hates it, and my friend hated it. So, and they're diehard Harry Potter fans, but I just thought this movie was a letdown. This movie could have been something special, something fun, just something good, but it, it managed to fail. I don't think it's a, a complete failure, mind you. There are some fun things to gather from this movie, and you know what? If, if the things they're setting up end up being good, I'm gonna eat my words and say that, you know what? If this is how it was supposed to be. And I would have been like, all right, fine, if that's how it's supposed to be, that's how it's supposed to be. And after ragging on the story and the characters, the editing was also a little wonky sometimes. That wasn't a consistently bad editing job, but there were just some moments that were kind of bizarre. And I'm like, oh, that's, that was edited ed strangely and probably could have been picked up a bit better. The overall, Fantastic Beast is... is is an all right movie with a ton of problems holding it back, specifically with its script and pacing. And that's why I'm gonna give Fantastic Beasts a five out of 10. It's harmless. If you see it, it's fine, you know, go see it, but I'm not recommending this highly. Now guys, what did you think of Fantastic Beasts? I feel like I'm the minority that really wasn't too big of a fan of this movie and thinks that it was, they shouldn't be making anymore. But I'd love to know what you guys think. I think this is kind of interesting because there's so many Diverse groups on this one that love it, hate it, in the middle, all that stuff. Stay a little late on this one, guys. Um, I didn't really get a chance to see it, but I will have a review soon, most likely this weekend, for Moana. I'm really excited about that one. And yeah, if you guys liked what you saw, you could subscribe to my channel to see more reviews for movies, late or not. <laughs> you can give this video a like. You can comment what you thought of Fantastic Beast, even though I said it already. Let's talk about it, because I love talking about movies and opinions and what we all think of it. Yeah, I hope you guys liked what you saw, and I will see you guys next time.